Sure, it's a kid's show, but that doesn't mean Goosebumps wasn't scary. The monsters, the locations, the twists, all of this helped create some terrifying episodes, but which ones were the scariest? That's what we're going to be finding out today. One disclaimer, this is just a list of the scariest episodes, not necessarily the best ones. So if it seems like an episode is missing, that might be why. Alright, let's begin with... Number 10, Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. Joe and his sister Wendy have a father who's obsessed with lawn ornaments. He brings home two gnomes that honestly look a little creepy. Well, considering this is Goosebumps, it's not too surprising that they come to life. The gnomes start destroying a neighbor's garden and Joe gets blamed for it. The thing that makes this episode so scary is the gnomes. Look at these things. They don't look like people in costumes. They look like actual lawn gnomes that came to life. I don't know how the effects team did it, but the gnomes have this clay look to them, but move around like real people. It's unsettling, and it's even more disturbing seeing that the gnomes take out the neighbor in the end of the episode. <laughs> Number 9, Say Cheese and Die. Greg and his friends sneak into an old worn down building that is the home of this weird guy named Spidey. Inside, they discover a bizarre looking camera. Greg soon discovers that whenever he takes a picture of someone, the photo shows something bad happening to them and it eventually comes true. The stuff that happens is serious as well, like Greg's dad getting into a car accident and his friend Sherry suddenly disappearing. Speaking of Sherry's disappearance, the scene where the police come to question Greg is pretty uneasy. They get suspicious of Greg, which gives the scene this really chilling feeling. That's why this episode is one of the scariest, but what also makes it scary is the fact that nobody believes the camera is evil until it's too late. This leads to tense moments, like when Greg's friend Bird jokingly tries to take a picture of Greg. All of this is why Say Cheese and Die makes a list of scariest Goosebumps episodes. Number 8, Welcome to Dead House. Amanda and Josh, along with their father and mother, move into a new house in a town called Dark Falls. As the family begins to adjust, Amanda can't help but feel something is wrong with their new home, almost like it's haunted. Not only that, there's something creepy about the entire town in general. As it turns out, everyone in Dark Falls is dead, and they want to eat Amanda, Josh, and their parents. There are a ton of moments in Welcome to Dead House that makes it scary. One of the creepiest is when Amanda has seen people appearing in her home or when she catches someone looking into her window. Not only are the residents of Dark Falls scary looking, but the entire town is disturbing. The whole place literally looks dead and gives the place this unsettling feeling. It's also pretty scary seeing the zombies go after not just the kids, but the parents as well. Number 7, The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. Siblings Jody and Mark are visiting their grandparents' farm as they have in the past. This time though, everything is just a bit odd. They eventually discover that one of the farmhands, Stanley, used magic to bring the scarecrows to life. Just look at these things. This is why The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight is such a scary episode. The gnomes are creepy, but the scarecrows are normal height and they don't talk, which makes them terrifying. The setting of a farm that's surrounded by cornfields is also a really creepy environment and makes for a tense atmosphere. The characters do eventually manage to defeat the scarecrows, but look at how they do it. This is pretty violent by Goosebump standards. The scarecrow walks at midnight, putting the scare in Scarecrow. Number 6, One Day at Horrorland, Part 1. A family of four gets lost on a road trip, but discovers an amusement park named Horrorland. They decide to check it out, but slowly discover that something is not right. Everything seems to be a bit too real, including the monsters that run Horrorland. A lot of Goosebumps episodes isolate the main characters, and this episode does that too, but the way it does it is very clever. The family enters the park voluntarily, and it's only after spending some time there that they realize they are trapped. That's very creepy, but on top of that, One Day at Horrorland does a great job of building suspense. For example, the characters will go on a ride, and it seems too real, but then the ride will come to an end. There's this constant question of is something really wrong with Horrorland, or is it just part of the experience? Now if you're wondering why I'm only counting One Day at Horrorland Part 1 and not the second part, well, let's just say Part 2 isn't quite as scary. Even with that though, the first part of this two-part episode still does a terrifyingly good job of giving us goosebumps. Number 5, Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Billy is going on a summer camp to a place called Camp Night Moon. As soon as he arrives, things start getting odd. Other kids start getting hurt, and then they abruptly disappear. When Billy goes to ask the camp counselors about it, they act as if the kids never existed. At one point, Billy tries to call his parents, only to find out that the phones aren't real. This episode has a classic horror setting, out in the middle of nowhere, isolated from society. What makes it really scary though, are the adults. The camp counselors are not helpful at all, and are actually kind of mean to the kids. The camp director, Uncle Al, is nicer, but as the episode goes along, there's something weird about him too. 
Especially for a kid, this is a terrifying situation since the adults, who you usually go to for help, can't slash won't do anything. Welcome to Camp Nightmare goes to show you, you don't always need a major monster to make a scary episode. Number 4, Bride of the Living Dummy. Jillian and her sister Katie, along with Katie's doll, Mary Ellen, go to see a ventriloquist dummy show featuring Jimmy O. James and Slappy. In a crazy series of events, Jimmy ends up giving Slappy to Jillian as a gift. Jillian and Katie soon realize that Slappy is alive and he wants his bride. All the Living Dummy episodes are scary, but I think Bride of the Living Dummy is the scariest. One reason is that Slappy comes to life at the start of the episode, so we see him alive and terrorizing people for the majority of the runtime. What also what makes Slappy especially scary in this episode is that he bosses around Jimmy O. James. It's pretty rare to have Slappy interact with adults, and seeing that he has control over this man is creepy. While Slappy is a scary part of this episode, what makes the episode disturbing is Mary Ellen. It turns out she's alive too, and she's been forcing Katie to do whatever she wants. Earlier in the episode, we hear how scared Katie is when she loses Mary Ellen. It's implied that Katie has had Mary Ellen for a while, so it's unsettling knowing that this little girl has been forced to do this evil doll's bidding and wasn't able to tell anyone. If all this doesn't make Bride of the Living Dummy scary enough, we also see what happens when Slappy possesses a human. Harrison? Are you okay? Harrison? <laughs> Sorry, folks. Harrison doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> Number three, the girl who cried monster. Lucy loves scaring her younger brother with stories about monsters. While visiting the library, she discovers that the librarian, Mr. Mortman, is a real monster. Unfortunately, no one believes Lucy when she tells them what she saw. This forces Lucy to try and get proof that Mr. Mortman really is a monster. But in doing so, she accidentally reveals herself, and now Mortman realizes that Lucy knows his secret. The plot of The Girl Who Cried Monster is terrifying. A monster is out to get you, and no one believes you. Not only that, but Mr. Mortman just has this quiet, unassuming behavior that makes him creepy, especially after he realizes that Lucy is onto him. The library where Mr. Mortman works looks kind of like a medieval castle, and the inside is shrouded in darkness, which makes it a pretty eerie place. A lot of the locations in this episode are dimly lit, just adding to the scariness. Then, in the end of the episode, it turns out the parents are monsters too, and they end up eating Mr. Mortman alive. <laughs> Number 2, The Haunted Mask A girl named Carly Beth is constantly the victim of pranks due to her easily being scared. She decides she wants to get revenge and finds the scariest mask she can. There's something wrong with the mask though. It changes Carly Beth's personality and the longer she wears it, the more difficult the mask is to get off. This is the classic Goosebumps episode, and while the premise is scary, I think what really makes The Haunted Mask so dark is Carly Beth. The actress who plays her, Catherine Lawn, does a great job making the viewers feel sympathetic for her and also terrified when she can't get the mask off. Speaking of the mask, it looks amazing. It really looks like it has attached itself to Carly Best's skin, making it all the more believable. This episode also takes place during Halloween, and the cold weather makes the episode even more chilling to watch. But the idea of a 12-year-old girl having a cursed mask permanently attached to her face is horrifying. It's made even scarier considering she has to do this mostly on her own. And the scariest episode of Goosebumps is... Stay out of the basement. Margaret and Casey are alone with their dad after their mother leaves to visit a relative. The kid's father, who is a scientist, has been working on experiments with plants in the basement of their home. Margaret and Casey's father warns them about going into the basement and gets really upset when they do. The kids are fine, never going down there, but they begin to hear strange noises. The sounds are coming from the basement, and on top of that, their father starts acting really weird, like eating plant food and green blood oozing from his arm. There is so much that's creepy about this episode. When Margaret and Casey get into the basement, they find all sorts of unnatural human and plant hybrids. Additionally, their basement just looks creepy, almost like a jungle. The scariest thing about this episode, though, is the sibling's father. He gets angry at them and doesn't even act like he's their dad. Margaret and Casey are legitimately afraid of him, which is just disturbing since he's supposed to be their parent. Not only that, but the fact that this is all happening in Margaret and Casey's home is one of the big reasons why this episode is the scariest one. Hey, did you know that the original ending to The Haunted Mask was so scary that it got banned? To find out why, watch this video on screen.